It's hard to go wrong when it comes to ordering at a steakhouse, but make no mistake, whether it's the lackluster flavor or a pure ripoff, all menu items are not created equal. These are some things you should order at a steakhouse, and some that you should skip. A trip to a steakhouse is a luxury experience, and if possible, you should order accordingly. Let's see, steak, steak, steak. Oh yeah, the Douglas Sirk steaks. Have that. There won't be anything on the menu more luxurious than Wagyu beef. Wagyu is a Japanese beef cattle breed known for the marbling, or fat, within the meat itself. Most pieces of steak will have most of the fat surrounding it. Wagyu is unique in that it has these streaks of fat within the tissue. This gives the steak an unrivaled level of flavor, richness, and tenderness. Not only is it tastier than other breeds of cattle, Wagyu beef is healthier as well. According to the American Wagyu Association, Wagyu has a higher ratio of healthy to unhealthy fat than other beef and has a minimal impact in raising cholesterol levels. The one downside is that all these great qualities come with a sizable price tag. Any cut of Wagyu beef will likely be the most expensive item on the menu, potentially costing up to and well past $100 for a 12-ounce steak. If you can get your hands on real Kobe beef, by all means, go for it. But that's going to be a taller task than you might imagine. Kobe beef is the meat that comes from one specific breed of the four breeds of Wagyu cattle. But outside of Japan, Kobe beef has come to be known as any type of Wagyu beef. That might seem like an insignificant detail, but this breed has a unique genetic makeup creating unrivaled marbling. In other words, even in the elite class of Wagyu beef, Kobe sits head and shoulders above the rest. So why is the piece of meat at your favorite steakhouse not the Kobe beef the menu says it is? In order for it to be true Kobe beef, it needs to come from a cow raised in a particular area in Japan in addition to meeting many other criteria. The environment, methods, and expertise required to properly produce this high-quality meat can only be found in Japan. Because of its rarity, Kobe beef is hard to find in America. According to Business Insider, in 2016, there were just just eight restaurants in the country that served the real thing. If you order a faux Kobe beef steak, you'll probably still end up with a pretty good meal, but you certainly won't be getting what you paid for. As the name implies, ribeye steaks come from the rib cage of the animal. They're often cut with the rib bone attached and hold on to a lot of the fat from the bone. The fat in the steak breaks down during the cooking process to both tenderize the meat and make it one of the most flavorful steak cuts you'll find. This cut of meat is often best cooked by pan searing. Because of its high fat content, ribeyes are prone to flare-ups that can occur on the grill. The grill's high heat can also quickly dry out the meat. Cooking it in a pan is a slower process that gives the fat time to break down and tenderize the meat, creating a mouth-watering steak. Personal preference aside, ordering a steak well done is a bad idea. When a steak is overcooked, it loses fat and moisture. The result is a dry, tough piece of meat. New York Magazine restaurant critic Adam Platt puts it best about ordering it well done, saying, You're just left with a hunk of beef which is burnt and which you put flavorings on. What's the point of it? If you're eating at a steakhouse, you're dealing with the highest quality steak cuts, which have been expertly cared for each step of the procurement process, and they have a price tag that proves it. But when you overcook a steak, it loses all the flavor that makes it worth the cost. You might as well throw your money down the drain. The ideal doneness for a steak is generally considered medium rare. At this point, the meat is still tender, and the fat has marbled to create a buttery, rich flavor. There may be no more iconic or recognizable cut of meat at your favorite steakhouse than the T-bone. Of course, I could get a hell of a good look at a T-bone steak by sticking my head up a bull's but I'd rather take the butcher's word for it. We've all been to restaurants where we face the dilemma of choosing between two equally appetizing options. This is where the beauty of the T-bone steak comes in. It's actually two steaks in one. The T-bone is cut from the short loin, below the backbone. This area produces some of the most tender cuts of steak. The short loin can be broken down into two steaks, a New York strip and filet mignon. But with the T-bone, these two pieces are kept together, separated by the bone from the name. Both the New York strip and filet mignon are cut from the center portion of the cow, meaning that they're more tender. The strip side has a strong, beefy flavor, while the filet is milder. The bone helps insulate the meat while it's being cooked, allowing the steak to retain moisture and juiciness. 
There are so many amazing cuts of meat on the menu of an average steakhouse, but one cut you're probably going to want to avoid is the tenderloin. Granted, the tenderloin is one of the most tender cuts of beef available. It's cut from the short loin portion of the cow. Because this area of the cow is not weight-bearing, there's little connective tissue to toughen up the muscle. But texture isn't everything. And what the tenderloin makes up in tenderness, it lacks in flavor. The problem is that this cut is very lean. The absence of fat means the tenderloin will have, at best, a mild flavor. You'll be dependent on a good, heavy sauce to bring life to the dish. At which point, you'll be wondering why you paid so much for a steak in the first place. If you're not up for the whole T-bone, stick with the New York strip steak. You'll most often see a New York strip served boneless, but you may have the option to leave the bone in. In this case, when the two cuts of the T-bone are separated, the middle bone is kept attached to the strip. You get closer to it, the, the meat is way juicier, way more tender. The bone helps insulate the beef while it cooks, allowing it to retain moisture and turn into a mouth-wateringly juicy steak. But it's best to wait to visit a steakhouse to try this style of cut rather than throwing one on the backyard grill as bone-in steaks are much harder to cook than boneless ones. It's best left up to the professionals. There's a strong argument to be made for never ordering chicken at a restaurant. So here is the chicken you'll be oh, enjoying tonight. You have this information. This is fantastic. Absolutely. Uh, his name was Colin. Here are his papers. It's far less flavorful than many other types of meat. And if you order your chicken dish from a steakhouse, there's a good chance it'll be overpriced. If you think you're going with the healthier choice by opting for poultry, Think again. Chicken portions served in restaurants are often larger than those of red meat. This eats into whatever calories you saved by eating a leaner protein. No matter how appetizing the dish sounds, chicken is always going to be an afterthought on a steakhouse menu. Not only are you settling for an inferior product, you're missing out on what the establishment does best. Chicken is an extremely common meal. Why waste a trip to the steakhouse on it? There's actually a science behind the idea of pairing red wine with red meat. Red wine generally is higher in tannins, chemicals found in grape skin and berries. While bitter, they work as perfect complements to both protein and fat. Tannin molecules soften the fat found in steak, making it more tender and flavorful. Meanwhile, the more tannin is absorbed by the steak, it reduces the astringency of the wine, making it taste smoother and less bitter. But which red to choose? And would you care to order wine with your meal? Uh, hi, yeah. Why don't you bring us a bottle of something or other? Uh, not too sweet? American. Cabernet Sauvignon is always a good choice for pairing with steak. It has a high level of tannin and a high alcohol content, which will help cut through the meat's fat. And the Cabernet Sauvignon's bold flavors won't be washed away by the powerful flavors of the steak. Generally, the characteristics of red wine and beef complement each other particularly well. But whites can certainly work too. You'll just need to be more particular when you're ordering at a steakhouse. Most white wines will have a subtle flavor that will be washed out by the steak. You'll be paying for a glass of wine that you can't even taste. But if you are going to indulge in a glass of white, the goal will be to find a full-bodied one that mimics the flavors of a red. Chardonnay, Riesling, and Champagne are all good choices. A white wine would work best with a leaner cut of meat and one that's simply prepared without a heavy sauce. Not every kind of white wine is going to pair well with the steak, though, so you'll be wise to avoid those that are too light and lacking in flavor. There are plenty of other beverages that pair well with steak that you can order from a steakhouse. The trick is finding one whose flavors won't be overpowered by the meat. The rich, caramel notes of whiskey fit the bill. Choosing which whiskey pairs best with your steak may be your biggest dilemma. A lot depends on the cut of the steak, how it's prepared, and what other flavors are involved. Bourbon and rye are popular options, but scotch is often the whiskey choice for grilled steak, as the spirit's smoky flavor complements the flavor from the grill. Whichever you choose, have your whiskey neat, on the rocks or in a simple cocktail, such as an old-fashioned. This will ensure the true tastes of the whiskey comes through and other flavors don't overpower the meal. Raw oysters are a mainstay on steakhouse menus. And though they may be delectable appetizers, you should think twice before ordering them. They eat algae, right? Algae, bacteria. Oysters keeps the water clean. So we're basically eating water filters. Yep. <laughs>
Oysters are a breeding ground for bacteria called Vibrio. Most Vibrio infections cause mild stomach illness, but severe cases can lead to bloodstream infections, severe blistering, and even death. Also important, all the myths you've heard about how to avoid tainted oysters are false. Bacteria aside, oysters can also go bad, just like any other perishable item. Although you can technically keep oysters in your fridge for up to five days if they're stored properly, they should be eaten within a few days of being harvested, ideally within 24 hours if you want the best flavor. The best thing about potatoes is their versatility. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Mm. Lovely big golden chips with a nice piece of fried fish. <laughs> Making them such a great side dish. Choose a preparation style that complements your entree, and you'll have yourself a perfect pairing. When it comes to steak, consider mashed potatoes. This comfort food has a creamy texture that goes well with the tender, juicy steak. There's also a much more significant benefit to washing that steak down with potatoes. Red meat consumption has been shown to increase the risk of colon cancer. However, studies have shown that eating red meat along with starch can decrease that risk. Researchers compared individuals who ate red meat alone as well as those who ate red meat and starch and found that the starch reversed some of the damaging effects of red meat on human cells. If you're a voracious carnivore heading to a steakhouse, you're probably shooting past the salad section on the menu. Salads are known to be some of the most overpriced items on any restaurant menu. The ingredients in most salads cost just a few dollars, but an upscale steakhouse can charge north of $15. If you think you're cutting calories by opting for greens, think again. Restaurant salads are often drenched in high-calorie dressings and covered in unhealthy toppings like bacon bits and cheese. Produce also happens to be a hotbed of contamination. According to a 2015 CDC estimate, nearly half of all foodborne illnesses are caused by produce. Meat and poultry caused only 22%, fish and shellfish just 6%. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more mashed videos about restaurants are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.